Joining us now with what he is buying, Jeff Crumpleman, the Chief Investment Strategist and Head of Equities with Mariner Wealth Advisors. Jeff, great to have you with us. Does this mean that the lows that we saw last year, you know, in, in October, for instance, that that actually priced in the recession reset that so many are anticipating this year? I, I think to a large extent that's true. I think that with the peak to trough decline of 25 percent and ending up the year down about 20 percent, that's generally uh, what happens around mild recessions, which is what folks expect to happen. And as you know, the stock market moves in advance. So in 23, when perhaps we finally do get that slowdown that everyone is expecting, both in earnings and the economy, the market's going to start looking to 24 and what's happening in that period. And we think as a result, this is the time to start, you know, putting your buy list together and uh, really look for opportunities. There's a lot out there right now. So are you looking towards 2024 at this point? Um, is that how you're thinking about things? That 2023 is sort of, I mean, David Solomon said 2023 is still highly uncertain. Um, there's a lot of anticipation that earnings revisions will still, still be marked down, and we still don't yet fully know the impact of, of the Fed's uh, camp tightening campaign. And, and so I'm wondering how you think about 2023 when you're talking about 2024 already. Well, so, you know, I, I think in, in some of my notes I mentioned, everybody ought to read uh, in the audience an article written in the Wall Street Journal that says for your New Year's, New Year's resolution, uh, say no to negativity. And, you know, I don't want to paint the picture that you uh, were whistling by the graveyard here. But, um, yes, I, I, I can show you many years in which earnings are finally revised down and the economy is soft. And it's a wonderful stock market, which is the inverse of what happened last year. So the data is just not that terrible out there. You still have the consumer employed spending balance sheets are strong, both personal balance sheets, corporate balance sheets. And what happens is our audience reads all these awful he headlines, which absolutely are terrible. But in line with this, this thinking about, you know, move away from this negativity bias that we all have. The trend is getting better. And I would argue that going from horrible to terrible in data and then on to bad and then to ugly and then not so bad is all that needs to happen here for the market to do well. And I think that's what we're seeing. Inflation's coming in and the fundamentals just are not that bad. So if we have a recession, it's going to be, I think, milder and the impact less worse on earnings than folks expect. And valuations become attractive in that kind of an environment. Mm -hmm. And you do like a number of consumer discretionary names, Decker's Outdoors, Starbucks, Booking Holdings, Aptiv, and Tesla. Let's let, For a minute, let's just focus in on Tesla and what they did in terms of the major price cuts. Um, the impact that we saw in terms of the legacy OEMs, negative. Uh, the impact that we saw in terms of the startup EVs, negative, because Tesla obviously is a market shareholder at this point, um, the leader. And what they say pretty much dictates the, the pricing for the industry. So was this like a, a genius move on the part of Elon Musk to cut prices so deeply, even though it, it in the near term impacts margins, certainly, and profitability? So, you know, what I would say about Tesla is, it's, let's put this in context, it's a 1% position in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a big bet on Tesla. I've got all kinds of stocks in here that are both old economy, which I think is beautiful, and new economy. Um, that I think provide great entry points. So Tesla falls in that new economy kind of point. And our argue, argument is simply this. They've got 80% plus share of electrical vehicles. And the article in the Wall Street Journal today just points out the fact that uh, EVs are now 10% market share of vehicle sales, going to double that over time. They've got 80% share, and it's not just a play on, on EVs. It's charging stations, advanced driving systems that they make. And I, I, riddle me this. I, I, I would pose a question to anybody and say, if I told you and ignore the name Tesla and said, we have a company that has leading ed edge technology, 80% market share in a growing end market, you think you want to own that? And I would say at a 1% position, uh, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer to do.